Biotin's benefits go way beyond hair and nails. So listen up right here if you want to find out how much you need, what you can get out of it, and how to avoid adverse effects. So most people who take biotin take it for their hair and nails. Yet biotin does so much more than this. Biotin deficiency, which you avoid with biotin, causes moodiness, cloudy thinking, and fatigue in some people. In others, it causes hair loss, difficulty concentrating, and stomach problems. In yet others, it causes hand tremors, muscle pain, and trouble breathing. And in some people, it even makes them need to wear glasses. Now, I'm saying that there's at least one person who when they weren't getting enough biotin, needed to wear glasses and got rid of them when they went on biotin. I'm not talking about they put contacts in. I'm saying their vision improved so they did, they did not need glasses anymore. Biotin deficiency also causes candida-infected red, itchy, scaly skin and unusual body odor. So if someone's saying, maybe it's candida, you gotta say, well, maybe you're deficient in a vitamin like B vitamin since nutritional deficiencies are what cause the ever-present, ubiquitous candida to start causing problems. Finally, biotin deficiency can massively increase serum cholesterol, and I'm talking about getting up to the 700s. So if a large deficiency can get you up to the 700s, then certainly a moderate deficiency can get you up into the 300s or the high 200s. So why are you going on a drug when you haven't even tried biotin? But anyway, biotin has reversed the loss of taste that occurred in one case due to lipoic acid supplementation, which interferes with biotin transport, and in another case, as a side effect of surgery. Biotin has allowed type 1 diabetics to go off insulin and maintain nearly normal blood sugar and has dramatically improved the neuromuscular problems of type 1 diabetes in another study. Half of mothers become spontaneously biotin deficient during pregnancy, and correcting this probably prevents birth defects. Now, on the other hand, Massive biotin doses can make human multiple sclerosis patients more likely to relapse. That's been shown at least twice. And they cause infertility in rats and birth defects in rabbits. Humans taking huge biotin doses for genetic defects do fine with pregnancy, but we're talking a small handful of people. We're talking about six people taking 10 to 20 milligrams, and we're talking about one person taking 100 milligrams. And they are special cases who need the high doses. So that does not mean that unnecessarily high biotin doses don't interfere with fertility in regular people. Smoking, the anticonvulsant valproate, and egg whites that are not thoroughly cooked by boiling them for at least four minutes, if not eight, can all induce biotin deficiency. There is no RDA for biotin. Officials have instead set an adequate intake, which is what they set when they don't have enough evidence for an RDA. And they did this by looking at the average intake among American infants and then adjusting it up based on body weight for adults, which is ridiculous. And they set that at 30 micrograms per day. That replaced an older recommendation of 300 micrograms per day, which was based on 150 to 300 micrograms per day apparently being needed to correct severe deficiency over a short time frame. The biotin requirement increases as a function of protein intake. And by my calculations, the following rules of thumb apply. Get at least 150 micrograms of biotin per day, which will allow an intake of non-collagen protein up to 100 grams. For each additional 50 grams of non-collagen protein after that, get an additional 35 micrograms of biotin. This puts most people in the range of 150 to 300 micrograms of biotin, coincidentally very much like the older official recommendation. To do this with food, you want to make the base of your diet rich in grass-fed animal products, a diversity of fermented foods, and a large volume of fresh produce. Then add one egg yolk equivalent for every 25 grams of non-collagen protein in your diet. Each egg yolk equivalent can be any of the following. One raw or cooked egg yolk with the white thrown in the trash. One whole egg boiled for at least four minutes one and a half fried eggs, three and a half poached eggs, or forget the eggs, eight grams of natto, nine grams of chicken liver, or 36 grams of beef liver. Pregnant and lactating women should multiply these values by 1.7 to get them higher. Children should adjust downward based on protein intake. Doses used for diabetes are between five and 10 milligrams per day, and those used for reversing loss of taste are 10 to 20 milligrams per day. It is not possible to know if such high doses were necessary in these studies. A loading dose of 10 milligrams per day can fix a deficiency much faster than a maintenance dose of 150 to 300 micrograms per day. So such high doses may help when used temporarily, but may not be the best 
for most people in the long term. Nevertheless, I estimate that one in 30 people need biotin at multi-milligram doses. The easiest way for you to tell if you're one of them is to start with a regular dose for a few weeks, that's 150 to 300 micrograms, and move up slowly toward a multi-milligram dose only if needed. If you benefit from the multi-milligram dose, you can occasionally try cutting back on it, and if you start to lose the benefits, keep the high dose. Doses of biotin higher than one milligram should be taken several hours away from food and away from supplements of B5, such as pantothenic acid or pantothine, and lipoic acid, so as not to interfere with the absorption of these nutrients. Biotin can overburden the mitochondrial respiratory chain for those who have impairments in it, leading to a wide variety of potential problems, especially cognitive and neuromuscular problems. Hello, relapse of MS. The easiest way to tell if biotin is doing this is to test waking morning lactate using a Nova Biomedical Lactate Plus. If biotin causes any rise in lactate that lasts more than a few days, especially over 1.0 millimoles per liter, and definitely over 1.5 millimoles per liter, this is a sign of that the dose is too high and might lead to adverse effects. I don't like to be a supplement shill, but the lowest doses of biotin can be obtained from Life Extension 600 micrograms of biotin per day or Solgar 300 micrograms per day. The Life Extension is a capsule and it's easy to open up the capsule and split it apart into halves, quarters, or even fifths if you want a lower dose. And for higher amounts, Gero is a cost-effective five milligram dose and Pure Encapsulations is a high purity, low risk of adverse effects to other random stuff in the capsule, eight milligram dose. And you can find all of my short and sweet tips for each nutrient in the cliff notes, so see the link in the description for that.